thank you so much i needed that reminder every day so otherwise i'm forgetting that so then now the session is getting recorded <coughs> so <coughs> yesterday we started with something called ptlc okay ptlc what is that performance testing life cycle only performance testing has a life cycle or every single every single testing out there has a life cycle i just wanted to know only performance testing is special and it has a life cycle or every testing out there like let's say security testing like let's say manual testing everything has a life cycle so is our performance testing in fact the software development itself has a life cycle as well so what do we call that as what do we call that as when you're developing a software itself has a life cycle we call this as sdlc okay software development life cycle just for development there is a life cycle testing also there is a life cycle life cycle is nothing but series of events that happen as a part of that activity okay life cycle is series of events that happen as part of that particular activity or yeah <clears throat> so for development we can't start developing the code for right from day one so there are some uh, activities similarly for testing okay there are, there are some messages which are coming in in the group can you guys please post a, a link to that guy anybody please in the class oh I, I could find the link thank you I could find the link Yeah, sorry. So yeah, so life cycle is there everywhere. So performance testing as a life cycle as there, as as well. So what is the stage one, guys? What is the stage one? Right from the day one, you will start taking and creating the scripts, or there is a process for it. There is a process, and the first one is an FR gathering. What is stage two? What is stage two? <clears throat> Let's not say Rahul, let's not say requirement gathering because once you get into performance testing, right, it's better we say non-functional requirements, okay? As never, even when you go to the interviews, don't use the word requirement, use the word non-functional requirement or NFR, okay? This is when you sound like a performance tester, okay? So these terminologies are very, very, very important when you go to the interviews or when you get into the project. Okay, you should talk like a performance tester. You should behave like a performance tester. Okay, so to talk like a performance tester, all the terms that we are using in the class, you have to get that into the mind. Okay, I know you have understood the concept, which is very, very good, but you should use that terminology as well, which is extremely important. Okay, so <clears throat> as I've told you, Okay, so the next one is, this takes usually 15 days. I said usually because it's not a rule of thumb or any standard, but that's what it is. So Phil, I'm not quite sure that's how they have done it. But even in our SDLC, Software Development Lifecycle, we have the gathering separate and the planning separate. Okay, so... Yeah, in the development phase, you don't have a planning, but it's a design. The planning and design where the plan, I mean, design phase where the actual planning happens. So gathering is separate in general. That's how, you know, it has been. So, <clears throat> yeah. So the next stage is test plan or, or you can say that, okay, test strategy. Okay, test plan or test strategy. Now, the third phase, the third phase is the test, test, design and development. Wonderful, wonderful guys, wonderful, wonderful. Test, design and development. Okay. Stage four, stage four is execution. And stage five is typically analysis, results and analysis. So finally, there could be a stage six as well, 
depending upon whether you have a bottleneck or not. For that, we have separate phase called bottleneck analysis. But only if you have a bottleneck, then it, it will actually get into the bottleneck analysis. Okay. So how long this phase will usually be for? How long it is there for? 15 days. Okay. And this one, how long is? This one, how long? This one, how long? Typically, I'm saying. No, it's not a rule of thumb. Test design is where you start creating the scripts. Okay. It is usually for one month or 30 days. Okay. Then the execution. And the execution is 15 days more. And finally, <coughs> analysis is 15 days. Okay. Bottleneck analysis. You know, there's no number of fixed days. So typically, it depends upon what kind of bottleneck we have. So usually, the project to complete it will take three months. This is what you should. This is how it looks like. Okay. So here we have the test manager. Here we have the test lead responsible for this. This is where the performance test specialist is responsible for. Okay. So this is how far we have discussed yesterday. So today we will start with the first stage NFR gathering. We'll look at very keenly as to what all the information that we collect as a part of NFR gathering. Expect the class to go a little longer than uh, regular timings. Okay. We'll try to wrap this chapter up today. Okay. Expect the class to go little, little more. Okay. So Srivali, I know you have asked me a question. Srivali, are you there? You're listening? Srivali? Are you there? Yeah. I know you have asked a question. So I'll get back to you definitely on that. If not, definitely on one-on-one, -on -one, I'll do something for you so that, you know, it, it will help you get started with your project. Okay. Don't worry. But either ways, I'm there. Okay. Thank you. Okay, NFR gathering, which is non-functional requirement gathering. Start using the word NFR. Okay, so we are in this first stage. We are in this first stage of performance testing life cycle. <clears throat> so let's see what all the information that we collect as a part of NFR. We'll go step by step, guys. We'll go step by step. And if you collect what all, what all is mentioned in the class, you would have collected everything that is needed for your project, guys. Okay, so just pay attention and when you get into the when you get into the real time projects, you know, you can refer back to this video and then you can ask all this information to the client so that you don't miss anything. Okay. So as a part of NFR gathering, okay, as a part of NFR gathering performance testing team is supposed to capture the configuration detail or infrastructure details or configuration details of what of both production environment and performance testing environment. So we're collecting the complete information of performance testing environment and production environment. Now you tell me we have we have we have gone through the uh, architecture classes very clearly and in the last day of architecture you know we have discussed about all the possible softwares and hardwares that is required for your project all the possible hardwares and softwares that are there as a part of the architecture now can you please tell me what is that hardware that we have discussed about hardware means the information which is related to the host okay the information that is related to the host so what all we have collected not just that let's go clear uh, one by one. So uh, what all the information that you have collected regarding the hardware guys, please tell me one by one. Shredda, wonderful. We have we have collected the information of the processor. OK, we have realized that they don't use actual servers. They don't use i3, i5, i sense. They use something called ultra spark servers. OK, then uh, okay, let's let's note it down one by one. OK, one is the processor. One is the memory. OK. And one is the brand as well. Okay, so memory and the brand as well. Like you know, uh, like for the laptops, we have Dell, we have uh, Samsung, we have Wyo, Sony Wyo, and all that. For the processors, unfortunately, these companies doesn't make it. Usually, the Sun Fire systems, uh, yeah, Sun Sun Microsystems actually makes, and other companies also makes. So. Sunfire is one of them like this. There are different companies. Okay, so this is the information that is related to the host. Okay, so typically we collect this information. We collect this information and OS wonderful. Okay, and OS operating system. The operating system could be could be 
Can you please come out with some operating systems? The nuns that I am aware of is Solaris, okay? Uh, HP, UX, okay? And uh, anything that you can, Red Hat Linux, okay? Red Hat Linux, okay? Windows Server, 2003-2008. So these are the OS. They don't use Windows 7, Windows Vista, Windows 8, and Windows uh, 10 for our uh, uh, this thing. It is important that both systems are using the same type of hardware. Yes, yes. When you said both, I, I think you are referring to both the, the production and performance testing environment. Yes. Yes. Uh, wonderful, wonderful uh, Lashin. Okay. We are supposed to also collect the information of storage, which is hard disk. Okay. And, uh, you know, the drive info and all that. Yes, yes. Yeah, that that good. And... Uh, OS, you know, it could be one of these OS and then now we have to come to the software. Okay, the software that is being installed. Okay, if it's a web app server, we know what all the web app servers we have done the assignments as well. So if it's a web app servers, what all the web app servers that you're aware of guys? What all the web app servers that you're aware of? Please. I want to hear from you quickly. The brands, I'm talking about brands, WebLogic. Wonderful. Okay. Apache Tomcat. Okay. Wonderful. Okay. Apache is the company name. Sumati. Tomcat is a product. Apache doesn't make just Tomcats. Apache makes Gmeter. Apache makes HTTP server. Apache makes a lot of things. Okay. So one of the things. Okay. <clears throat> so WebLogic. Uh, Tomcat. IIS. IIS is I think it's just a web server. So uh, um, anything um, uh, JBoss okay so like this there are a lot of web app servers along with the version you have to collect okay if it's a database server okay if it's a database server we have Oracle we have DB2 and we have other stuff okay Microsoft SQL server okay so we have a lot of we have a lot of servers so we are supposed to collect all this information guys we are supposed to collect all this information for your project for your project okay mongodb kumar kumar says mongodb let me add that okay okay so so we have to collect all this information as a part of infrastructure Okay, as a part of infrastructure details, which is a part of NFR gathering. What is the first thing that we collect? We collect the host information, which processor, which memories and uh, which brand, which hard disk and all that. Then we collect what is the operating system of the host machine. It could be one of them. Okay, then we collect the web app server information. You have web server, app server separately, then collect both the information. You have web app server, then collect the information along with the version, along with the version. Okay, and then the database server. Okay, along with the versions. So, do we collect only this? Do we collect all this information only for the performance testing environment or for both of them? When I said both, one is prod environment or production environment. Okay, so do we collect only for the performance testing environment or for both of them? Or for both of them? Can you tell me why we are collecting for both of them? Anybody? Can we collect, can you tell me why we are collecting both this information? Yes, if there is a load balancer, we have to collect that information of the load balancer as well. But just to tell you, Phil, most of the load balancers these days are the part of web app servers itself. It's a piece of software or a plugin. Okay, but I heard it could be a plugin or it could be hardware. So that is the reason why you might, even though the architecture says you have a load balancer but when you go to the infra details you might not find it because that could be a plugin just that you know okay oh, wonderful Kumar so wonderful so to compare both of them to compare both of them so when we have understood when we have understood the definition of performance testing we have understood that the performance testing needs to be done on production like environment so when you collect the details for both of them this is when we know if our performance testing environment it is just like production or not is just like production or not or is it 50% of production or is it 75% of production you will be able to compare both of them okay so for that it is advisable to collect both the details as per rule we are supposed to collect both the rules uh, sorry details for both the environments both the environments okay but but 
there are certain cases wherein you know we are not so cooperative okay collecting just the performance testing environment it will take such a pain in the neck it will take a lot of time okay so such a pain in the neck so yeah so collecting more information will become more challenging so i'm telling you the practical problems okay which i have faced okay so i sometimes give up honestly speaking it's like follow up follow up follow up then they ask you oh we have given all the information for your performance testing why do you need for prod okay oh then you know they keep delaying and all that so if it is a possibility yes you have to collect both of them but honestly sometimes it is not possible so you cannot you cannot blame anybody or you should not get pissed off this is the one thing that you need to know guys okay in software testing industry never get pissed off with anybody you know this is a corporate life and you have to be have friends with everybody okay so you just push 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 and it at some point of time you know if if it's really really significant and important then you keep pushing it otherwise you know you just let it go okay so you need to know where how long, how much you can push it okay so this is just my personal advice but anyways you know that that's what i felt different people have different characters i mean different different uh, different personalities and uh, you know different people deal uh, with the circumstances differently so it's up to you how you wanted to deal with it okay so why we wanted to collect for both of them so that you know you'll be able to compare but more significantly we need to collect for this okay so krishna prasad has um as a question okay a uh, wonderful question krishna load balancer is just an algorithm i mean just a software or something else uh, th that's what i have repeated krishna honestly speaking i am not from the infrastructure you know i am a performance tester so when i deal with people this is when i get to learn okay so whatever the information that i am about to tell you this is something which i have heard from people but i haven't read anywhere so please confirm it so what i heard is load balancer could be just a plugin it says as good as just a plugin which is a piece of software or sometimes it could be a hardware as well okay it could be a combination of hardware and software okay so from what i know for my project it was a plugin okay this is something which i know but what i heard is it could be a separate piece of hardware as well so if you are really interested after the class you can go back and you and you search for all the load balancers available in the market and do a little bit of research as to whether it's a hardware or software and you can get back to me okay you can take that as an assignment for today okay the assignment is do further academic research on load balancers what is the what what is the assignment or what is the homework or assignment for today assignment for this weekend i would say okay is i hope you understand by the word academic research which means that you know you don't go really and do some research it's all internet research okay go internet research do this research on load balance okay collect as much information as possible put it down on the piece of paper okay and you know you can just get it to it okay yeah that's the algorithm phil once you have the load balancer you have the algorithm on that it could be a round robin or it could be ip or it could be anything but these days they are not using ip i think we have discussed this point in the last week as well load balancers earlier they used to they used to uh, you know break the you know identify the same system based on the ips but these days i don't think it is breaking on the ips you know the algorithms but yes the types of usage like round robin or ip and all that yes okay so do some academic research on load balancer try to get as much uh, as much information as possible and put it in a put it in a document and send it to me and don't copy paste from the internet please please don't copy paste try to do as much research as possible and put all the information in your mind and then you can type it and send it to me just don't read something you like the sentence copy and paste it over here please don't do that okay it will hardly take couple of hours if you say okay so that's that's the uh, assignment for this weekend so last time around i just got two submissions okay only two out of 25 okay so that is less than 10% okay so i i wanted that percentage to improve this time around okay so everything that you do in the class right it will help you it will help you grow as a software it guy definitely this is something i'm telling you not just as a performance tester 
okay this is something which i can tell you confidently okay so uh, these servers are not just for performance testers you know when you get into the it industry this is the bare minimum that you're supposed to know okay this is how i would i would put it okay and also and also so the assignments i am um, sorry if i am you know i'm giving these assignments halfway through the class okay so since it's a weekend i will send you the videos of last batch i'll send you the videos of the last batch not last class last batch it goes from day 1 to day 31 okay it goes from day 1 to day 31 okay so watch the videos watch the videos from uh, day uh, 7 okay from from the minute from the minute 42 minutes okay so start watching and once you're comfortable create the first script on VHL. create the first script on VHL. okay so watch probably day 7 from 42nd minute and maybe day 8 as well okay so <clears throat> so I would want you to create a first simple basic script on VHL. so Kumar if you are creating then what you will teach okay so I want you to be ahead of the class I will certainly go back and teach okay but I want you to be ahead of the class so these are the two assignments I'm expecting from everybody guys please do it okay <clears throat> now coming back okay so this is the information that we collect so Kumar can you show us can you show us like you know what is this for your project I've already shown you put it in the diagram and I've shown the architecture for you but again certainly I'll show it to you uh, how it is given to me all this infrastructure details okay okay so <clears throat> you see this is this is the information for Oracle database okay Oracle DB this is the information for Oracle DB and what is the brand of that uh, server it is Sunfire V490 okay the processor is ultra spark 4 processor ultra spark 4 processor okay with what is the speed every processor has a speed right let me see what is the speed of my processor okay let is the let me see what is the speed of my processor okay what is the processor i have i5 and what is the speed 3.4 gigahertz that's pretty fast okay that's pretty fast so here also okay so you have 1.35 gigahertz and how many cores how many cores four cores four cores which means that you have four cpus of 1.35 gigahertz okay earlier each core is separate so each cpu is separate but later on they started realizing you know people started combining this course course means what one cpu they started combining together so that you know it will create a combined speed so if i remember correctly the first the first uh, cpu for a general public that i mean with the with the with the course uh, together was a dual core so this is the first experiment which was successful so they have they have two cores they have attached to each other and then there was a dual core there was a dual core two cores then you have i3 okay i5 okay and then you have i7 okay so i don't know how many cores you they have i3 doesn't mean that it has three cores no certainly not i5 for me i have four cores i have an i5 processor okay i have the i5 processor okay so if you go back and look for i5 it has four cores okay it has four cores how do i know go to task manager and uh, uh, performance it's somewhere you can break it down i'm just wondering where you can break it down anybody knows like you know how to break down uh, and look for each core uh, there is one place maybe perfmon will give me okay <clears throat> hang on guys <clears throat> Just give me guys I wanted to show the proof that i5 has four cores so somehow it is showing me the total stuff okay just give me a moment um, 
just don't worry what I'm doing on the Perfmon. Okay, at some point of time, I will certainly explain what Perfmon means. Okay. <clears throat> Okay. Somewhere it has to say four cores. I'll get back to you on that. I'll get back to you on that. There will be a place wherein we can see clearly like all the four being monitored. Okay. So <coughs> I5 means I5 means it has four cores. Okay. I5 means it has four cores. Okay. So you can you can check online number of cores for I5 processor. Okay, i3 processor have two cores as I've told you i3 doesn't mean that it has three cores It has two cores i5 has four cores You see i5 has four cores and i7 model has four as well i7 model has four as well as you can clearly see you have four CPUs Okay, and the cache will be shared across all of them So they have designed instead of you know They started realizing that you know to improve the speeds the number of processors needs to increase so instead of putting these two processors separately you know while manufacturing itself they are putting it together and they made some changes like you know the cache memory is shared across both of them and certain things are shared across both of them okay so for me now for me now if i go back to my uh, excel sheet uh, where is my okay this is where it is okay so it has four cores typically the servers have four cores it doesn't mean that it is four different servers Okay, so when you go back to our architecture picture, we see we clearly see that, you know, um, you know, when you scale out, when you scale out, you have a completely new web app server here four into uh, blah, blah, blah doesn't mean that you have four database servers. It's only one Oracle database servers, but it has four cores inside that. Please keep that in mind. Okay, some people get confused if they say four multiplied by blah blah blah. Oh, it has four processors, which means that four database servers. No, four processors doesn't mean that four database servers and you have a load balancer. Your four means it just have four cores, which is a part of one single server. Okay, like my system is i5, which has four cores. It doesn't mean that it's four different systems or four different machines. It's only one machine having four uh, four processors working together so that it can create that speed. Okay, and what is the memory for my database? As you can see, it is a 32 GB memory. Okay, and <clears throat> somebody has asked me, okay, somebody has asked me the hard disk, you know, does it include the information of the hard disk as well? Yes, it includes the information of the hard disk as well. So this is the relevant information. It should be good enough. And what is the hard disk that I have? 146 GB. And hard disk, if you know internally or not, how the hard disk works is it. It, it rotates okay so whenever you start the systems if it was an old system it will make some funny noises okay which means that the hard disk what does it mean is the hard disk is rotating inside okay if you're good with the machines you you like opening up the systems and all that you can open and you can open and see the hard disk actually rotates and that's how it can read the information from the hard disk and you can see the rpm rotations per minute per minute yeah. how much yeah. how, how fast it is rotating 10,000 10,000 rotations per minute which means that 10,000 rotations per second anyways this is not such a significant information but just that you know I want you to know that you know what is happening okay inside and there are other information like okay the OS on this this is the important information the OS on this is Solaris 9 and what is the java java es is pre-installed in java there is e e es and all that okay different versions of java different technologies of version uh, uh, te technologies or environments or environments of java is there okay like we have normal java we have java e e and java es so it comes with java es pre-installed so it doesn't mean you need not have to install so all this information so this is the hardware information if you see clearly this is the host information for which for the oracle database okay and network information is also given our kumar was mentioning about it so does it include or he was mentioning that the network information is also provided yes the network information is provided clearly okay and what kind of software it has it has oracle 10g okay 
no no use as part of pt but understand that you know your application is developed in that okay so you see this is an oracle database okay so this is how much if you can understand they will give you the complete infra details they don't create this document and okay one more thing if you are wondering that the infrastructure team has separately created this document and given it to you no as a part of their process they would have all these documents you have just requested for it and they get, and, and they and they have and they have thrown this information at you okay so you take the information that is required for your performance testing which i have told you okay all this information that i have told you should be good enough should be good enough for you okay and this information over here what is the software this information should be good enough and now for the web app server it is web logic okay web logic server okay and again hardware information is provided it's pretty much similar to what we have earlier but except that it has a 16 gb memory here it is 32 gb memory whenever i say memory it is the ram so it's a 16 gb memory and hard disk is same the processor speed is same the number of cores is same and it is using the same processor so and it has the same os as well same os and here they are using weblogic 8 8.1 premier version okay this is what is required so this is the sample environment details that i have received for my infrastructure i mean for my project from my infrastructure team again so i went to the client and i said i need the infrastructure details he said oh, why do you need all that then i have explained and i said okay fine no i don't even care why you need go to this guy who is a part of infrastructure team coordinate with him probably he will help you out then i had to co then i had to coordinate with him and finally he has given this document to me and if you notice this is the document actually for my performance testing environment okay this is not my for my production okay so this is my performance testing environment okay so this is not even for production so i don't even know what is there for production honestly speaking okay <clears throat> so that is the first thing that you collect as a part of that is the first thing that you collect as a part of performance testing okay sorry nfr gathering is a part of nfr gathering so ideally you have to collect for both production and performance i what i've shown you was for my performance sorry performance testing environment i couldn't get hold of the production okay they were asking me 100 questions finally said oh okay fine later on i will give it to you and then that's about it anyways <clears throat> so that's the first thing that's the first thing now we'll get into the second thing are we done are, are, do you think we are done with the nfr gathering no that is the first thing that we collect you remember we have 15 days we have 15 days to collect which means that we have lot of stuff to collect we have lot of stuff to collect next you know transaction details okay so to explain this transaction details i know it is easy for for me to explain the transaction details but i thought you know if you create some analogies and you know if you if, if i explain this way it it will go into your mind and you will never forget okay so that's why i've taken the help of uh, mark for explaining this concept and let's see what has happened you know now mark was a senator you know he bought a audi car and all that but unfortunately now the election uh, now the term is done and the next time around he is no more a, no more a senator he is no more a minister so what he has done he has chosen an alternative path for his career so he has joined a hotel management course has he has to open a restaurant okay he has to open a restaurant okay <clears throat> so he has joined the classes okay his classes are going fine and mark is worried about his upcoming exams because he has no time for preparation okay no time for preparation it happens for all the time it happens all the time with all the people okay so <clears throat> now let's see what mark has done he's a smart guy you know he has won won the elections which means that you know he's a pretty smart guy so then mark has identified some critical topics and started his preparation accordingly so what he has done instead of reading all the books he has identified some critical topics and he started reading only that stuff because there's only one day left okay we we did this i mean i don't know i have done this so probably you know most of the people would have done that and finally mark has attempted the exam successfully that's a different story okay <clears throat> now let's see how we can relate that analogy for our performance testing relate that analogy for our performance testing or for our nfr gathering okay now as a part of nfr gathering pt team is supposed to capture the list of performance critical transactions you see only we are capturing performance critical transactions are we capturing all of them no only the performance critical 
just like Mark has identified the critical topics to read as a performance testing team we are supposed to capture only performance critical transactions not all the transactions which are possible when I said transactions you know the business processes or the functionalities okay now the next question is Kumar okay we will do that okay so uh, we'll do the, uh, there are some questions coming in I'll take all the questions once I come to the logical ending okay so <clears throat> now now so Kumar okay fine I take your point okay we, we don't have enough time to do performance testing for all of them okay just like Mark didn't have the time so we have selected the performance we have we have handpicked few transactions and we'll do the performance testing for only those transactions I'm happy with this okay Kumar I understood that uh, I totally agree with you but how what is that you can say as performance critical is there is there is there some set of rules for that or how can we say particular transaction is performance critical okay so yes there there are some rules or there are some set of uh, uh, um, guidelines for that so <clears throat> let me tell you what are those guidelines what transactions are called as performance critical transactions okay transactions which are executed frequently in the real world when I said execution frequently in the real world okay let's let's understand what are these transactions which are executed frequently okay for that let me take an example of banking application let's say your AUT or SUT is what banking application your AUT means application under test or SUT means system under test the, the application with, for which you are testing let's say it is a banking application if you are in India I see ICI is a popular one if you are in US BOFA BOFA is a popular one BOFA you all of you know BOFA BOFA somehow in India that term is very very popular BOFA heard about this term BOFA yes what is that BOFA Bank of America right okay so Bank of America so let's say <coughs> yes so so for people in US I think that's a news <laughs> but somehow in India we call that uh, or people in US you call that BOFA as well I, I just wanted to know somebody who's not working for Bank of America yeah BOFA is popular okay 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 yeah oh, okay Rupa confirmed three will confirm will confirm okay so I thought you know I never when I was in US I never heard BOFA you know so there's key bank there is national city bank Bank of America city bank yeah <clears throat> By the way, all my career is in banking domain. So most of my examples going forward will be in and around banking guys. Okay. So either it could be Gmail or Facebook or some of the banking applications. So <clears throat> now for a banking application, watch carefully which transactions instead of using transactions, I should have said business processes. Okay. So following transactions are critical. What is those transactions which are critical? Account summary details because that is frequently used by a lot of customers because once they log in the first thing that they check is the account summary to see how much balance they have and checking transaction history this is done by a lot of people as well so it is frequently used balance transfer again which functionality is used by a lot of people so again this is executed frequently so it is performance critical login obviously login logout are obviously performance critical transactions so these are all performance critical and there are more and there are definitely there are a lot of more but just to give you a ballpark idea as to what is what is frequently used I gave you so Kumar it's fine you have given me what is frequently used but can you give me something which are not frequently used so that I'm absolutely clear in my, in my mind yes I'll give you that like change password how many people have changed your banking password last time around okay or when when was the last time you have changed the password okay when was the last time you have changed the password most of you would say no we have never say never at least I have never changed but some of you would have said it could be one year or two years back or whatever it is you don't even remember so it is very it, the functionality is available to change the password but it's not frequently used change the username okay change the username or change the theme if there is a possibility I don't even know that there is something like that but somebody told me yeah you can change the theme for banking applications as well ordering the checkbooks this is this is not frequently used but it will be used to certain extent but you know very it's not frequently as frequently as balancing transferring the balance or checking the transaction history or summary details and all that okay or opening a new account okay people will not have more than one account even though they open account it will be one more that's it 
So these are the functionalities which are very, or oh, open NFT. If you are in India, you call it as FT. If you are in US, you call it as certificate of deposit, COD or something like that. In India, it's called fixed deposits. Okay, so opening a fixed deposit or certificate of deposit. So these are very, very rarely used functionalities uh, online. So these are not performance critical. So we do performance testing for this. We don't do performance testing for this kind of transactions. Why? Because we cannot do performance testing for all of them. We have a limited time. Creating the scripts is little challenging. So we cannot keep, keep creating for all of them. So that is the reason why we do we handpick and we select some transactions and we do we do performance testing only for those handpicked transactions handpicked transactions okay so we'll take a break now once i come back from the break i'll take all the questions i know some questions are pending okay in my chat window i'll take all the questions i'll keep you on mute and stop recording guys i'll keep you on mute and stop recording first there you go so this is the performance critical transactions guys so i gave you an example as well as to how these performance critical transactions are okay let me complete the whole chapter for this transaction details before i start taking the questions now are these the frequently used ones are the only performance critical transactions no the others performance the others are called performance critical transactions what are those transactions which are critical for the business okay so if you go back the performance critical transactions are of of three okay you can categorize them as three ones which are executed frequently ones which are executed frequently ones which are critical for business ones which are critical for business and the ones which are suspected to have to have high resource intensive okay suspect suspected to have the high resource intensive usage or in other words it is using a um, lot of resources of your hardware Okay, the transactions which are suspected, the sentence needs to be modified. Yes, the, the, the transactions which are suspected to have uh, to, to use to use a uh, high resource intensive or high resource intensive usage. Okay, to have high resource intensive usage. Okay, so critical for business. We have seen the frequently used ones which are regularly used with which maximum load is created on the server. Now, the second one is the ones which are critical for business you know these transactions even though they don't create too much load on the server but since they are critical for business you have to do the performance testing for them okay even though they are not creating too much load on the servers but since they are critical for business it is good to do uh, the performance testing for them okay again for the banking applications open open a savings account or any account as a matter of fact okay from the account so more accounts a bank have the better bank it is so online you can open the accounts okay so you that is important because you know that will create a lot of business for uh, for the banking so even though it doesn't happen all the time it doesn't happen all the time you know it's not frequent but it will create or it will create the business for the bank so it's better to open the savings account okay open nfd or open the certificate of deposit so um, uh, hang on guys so just just give me a moment so here open a new new account i need to take that away okay sorry about that okay so <clears throat> and transactions that are suspected to have high resource intensive usage okay so i'll, I'll make sure you know i'll correct uh, so that you know uh, there won't be any issues for the next batch okay <clears throat> so yes so you when you open a fixed deposit if it's in india it's a fixed deposit if it's elsewhere it's a it's a cd is what we call it again that will create a lot of business okay so these are the ones which are critical for the business but they are not frequently used but you do the performance testing for that okay make sure your customer is having a best of the experiences when they are creating or when they are uh, creating a business for you or when they are giving you more money to you so that's what we make sure okay keep them happy keep them happy while they are while they are you know creating a business for you or increasing your business and <clears throat> So this is this is the second category which is critical for the business now the third category is the transactions that are suspected to have high resource intensive 
okay or high resource intensive transactions okay is something that you need to do for example for the banking application you want a bank statement for the last five years okay so uh, typically for bank of i had an account with bank of america and uh, you could pull out the transaction history or the statement for the last five years legally as a u.s banking you know the the, the customer is entitled to 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 look at his transactions for the last five years so that's what most of the uh, banking applications provides so if you're if you're trying to pull out all the transactions from the last five years lot of lot of data needs to be pulled out from the database so it's high resource intensive it's high resource intensive you see from the last five years let's say there are thousand transactions that you have to you have done and all the data needs to be pulled from the database so it will create certain load on the or it will it will have a lot of processor it will use a lot of processor and probably the ram as well so this is high resource intensive so you have to do the performance testing for these kind of transactions as well but again you know pulling out the statement from last five years it doesn't happen often it happens very very rarely but even though it's not frequently used but it is creating uh, um, it, it is creating certain load you know some abrupt load it is creating you know a certain high intensive load on the server so it's better you include that as part of your performance testing as well so that you know because of this we have to see how the performance of other transactions will affect as well not only this but how it will affect the other transactions is what you will be more interested by by including this to your performance testing so what are the three categories one is the ones which are frequently used okay the ones which which are critical for business okay if it's an amazon application the critical for business is payment okay when you are making a payment payment transaction has to be uh, performance i mean the performance of that should be good enough okay and the ones which are high resource intensive high resource intensive so you collect all this information you collect all this information as a part of as a part of nfr gathering as a part of nfr gathering now i'll take your questions guys now i'll take your questions okay any questions any questions guys any questions that you have i am not looking at the chat window okay so <clears throat> any questions okay shraddha had a question transaction this is related to functionality so all the functionalities are given as a part of nfr shraddha i have already answered it it's only critical so pt was done only for those transactions yes only critical okay not all of them shraddha okay so there are no more questions no more questions so far we have collected what so far we have collected the infrastructure details and the transaction details so far we have collected the infrastructure details and the transaction details okay so i don't think you need an example for this because i have already given you the example while i am explaining the concepts okay so you collect this kind of information from the track okay now the next one is the scalability related data already we have discussed what is scalability guys i i know i, I necessarily have put the uh, slide over here we already know the what is scalability you see mark has remember mark wanted to buy an audi car and he in the future you will have the kits but not now so but he wants to test the car for the future load as well for the future load as well so he had his neighbor kits come over and went for the test drive went for the test drive just to make sure the car is supporting the future load the car is supporting the future load so that scalability related information we have to collect as a part of nfr that scalability related information we have collected as a part of nfr yesterday i learned from you some of you that there is an x2 x2 test and x3 test as well okay which is part of scalability test okay wonderful so if you don't have the nfr probably then i think they go with an x2 and x3 test but typically you are supposed to collect this scalability related data okay and how does it look like okay so how do i look like so there is nothing i put the same thing in the nfr document and it becomes this okay so there is nothing that i can do that it is pulled out from the nfr document itself okay shraddha i am answering you okay so there is a 100% increase in the user load annually you see this is pulled out from my nfr document itself okay this is pulled out from my nfr document itself what is this there is a 100% increase user load increase okay but there is 100% increase in the user load annually annually means every year okay so once you have this requirement 
after the load test is done, after the stress test is done, after the scalability test is done, sorry, after the soak test is done, then you do the scalability test. I'll talk about this test late, at a later point of time, but <clears throat> I'll tell you there, are, just to give you a ballpark idea at this point of time, okay, so there are different kinds of tests like load test, okay, then you have stress test, then you have uh, soak or endurance test, and finally there is scalability test, there is scalability. Okay, what is the definition of performance testing guys? Performance testing is testing for speed. Okay, that we do with the load test. Testing for, testing for stability. Okay, that we can do with the soak test. And testing for scalability. That we can do with the scalability test. That we can do with the scalability test. Okay, stress test is one extra test. Stress, stress test is one extra test. Test, performance testing is what? Testing the application for speed, stability and scalability. For checking the speed, you do a test called load test. Again, we'll get into the details. We'll discuss in detail about all that. But now that the point has come, so I give you a ballpark idea as to what it is. Performance testing is not only testing for speed, but the stability. How can you do the, how can you test for stability? By doing a soak or an endurance test. And performance testing is testing for the scalability. How do you do that? By doing the scalability test. By doing the scalability. Okay. Now, for doing the scalability test, we need to have the NFRs. So, at the first stage itself, at the first stage itself, we collect all the information of the NFRs. Sorry, uh, all the scalability related information as a part of NFR, as a part of NFR. Okay. That's the scalability. So, so far it's simple. Scalability related data is pretty simple. So, so far we have collected what? Infrastructure details. Second one is what? Second one is what? The transactional details and the third one is the scalability related information or scalability related data. Now this is important guys. This is important. So yesterday when I was discussing about performance testing life cycle, okay, PTLC, okay, in the stage two, stage two is what? Test plan or test design phase plus test plan or test design phase. I told you there is one important activity that happens as a part of this test plan or test design phase. Can you recollect or remember any activity that happens as a part of this? Wonderful Shredda. What is that? WLM. So what is the full form of WLM guys? What is the full form of WLM? Workload modeling. Workload modeling. Wonderful. Okay. So for doing the workload modeling, there is some information that is required there is some information or there is certain data certain information that you have to collect that you have to collect and that you will collect as a part of nfr that you will collect as a part of nfr and we call this as workload related data we can call this as workload related data why because as a part of performance testing life cycle there is a phase called test plan or test design phase and as a part of that you have to do an activity called workload modeling and for that i need some prior input i need some prior input or some prior information and that is the reason why we are collecting this that is the reason why we are collecting this okay but i'm telling you the whole the the load test the stress test the soak test endurance tests uh, scalability test everything is based on workload modeling everything is based on workload modeling so this is probably the important activity the important activity in performance testing guys so uh, when the time comes i'll talk about it so i don't want it to cover now because so much of theory in the next from the next week i'll get into the tool but i'll pick up somewhere halfway through i'll pick up i'll give a break on the tool then i'll go to the workload modeling because i don't want it to cover all the theory at once because it becomes boring okay it becomes boring so <clears throat> yeah so we have weekends as well we have weekends as well but i wanted to do the workload modeling the actual workload modeling the basic workload modeling as a part of the class the advanced one as a part of the week okay so workload related data okay so what we collect as this what we collect uh, the information okay so for example now we have this business process or the transactions we have collected as a part of transaction details. What are those? Logins, account summary details. Why? Because it is of high volume. Login, we have collected this because it's a high volume. Do you remember what kind of what kind of 
transactions are performance critical, which are high volume or which are business critical or which are high resource intensive. So the login, account summary details, checking the transaction history, these are all high volumes. So we have collected this information and this opening FD or CD, this is the business critical transaction. So we have collected this business process or the transaction statement from the last five years. This is high resource intensive. We have collected this. Now, these are all the business processes. We can call this as business processes or we can call them as transactions or some people call this as scripts. Some people call this as functionalities. Different people call it different names. So I will call this as business process or transactions or transactions. So ideally we should call this as business process. Okay, so there could be more in the real time project. There could be 30, 40, but I have limited it to five. I have limited it to five so that you totally understand what they are. Now, what do we collect as a part of workload related data? Watch carefully. What are we collecting as a part of workload related data? Watch carefully. The transactional volumes. What are we collecting? The transactional volumes, as in the transactions per hour. The transactions per hour. Watch carefully for login. How many transactions are happening for every one hour? 700. For account summary details, how many transactions are happening for every one hour? 700. Checking transaction history, how many are happening for every one hour? 800. Okay, so open FD, only 30. You see the volumes are less, but it is still included into our performance testing because it is business critical. Okay, statement from last one year, only 10 transactions are happening for one hour, but you still included that for performance testing because it is high resource intensive. Probably what 700 resource, 700 transactions here, take the CPU, the CPU which is taken by 700 transactions, the same CPU could be taken by only 10 transactions because this is high resource intensive transaction. So we collect this. So we collect this information. Now the next question is for which hour? Every day you have 24 hours. So for which hour we are supposed to collect this information? Can somebody tell me? There in a day there are 24 hours. For hour to hour basis, you know, this is for the banking application, right? So probably seven o'clock will have certain number of logins. 8, 8 to 9 will have some certain number of logins. 9 to 10 could have certain number of logins. Evening 5 to 6 could have certain number of logins. So for which hour we are supposed to take this information? Any idea for which hour we are supposed to take this information? Any guesses? Shredda, it will not be given. We have to collect it. Okay, We have to educate and we have to collect it. If the guy is educated, he will give you all the information. Okay, so that's why we are call, calling this as NFR gathering, not NFR given. So we have to, we are supposed to gather this information. Okay, so yes, for all the functionalities we are supposed to gather, which are performance critical. Now I have a simple question, guys. Give it a guess. For which hour are we supposed to get this information? Okay, for every hour we are getting this information. Okay, for logins, 700 has happened. Okay. Let's say it is face. I mean, the application is already already in production. Okay, the application is already in production. For which hour? Ideally, as a performance tester, for which hour? Everybody understood the question. Everybody understood the question. Okay. So, in performance testing, we have discussed that there is something called peak hour. There is something called peak hour. What is the peak hour, guys? What is the peak hour, guys? What is the peak hour? What is the peak hour? Can somebody tell me when when? When the business is maximum, okay. When the business is maximum, okay. So we have discussed when we are discussing about Mark and the restaurant and all that, or the Burger King or Burger Place. You know, when when will be the peak hour for that Burger uh, restaurant or the Burger Place? When do you think was the peak hour? When was the peak hour that we have discussed? Much time. Yes, could you remember that? So probably it could be in the afternoons and it could be from 12 to 1 because that's when most of the people will be having their lunch. Okay. So for every business, there is a peak hour for our application under test, which is a Bank of America application. Okay. Which is an online banking application. There is a peak cover for that as well. Peak cover is when there are maximum number of transactions on the application. We have discussed this guys, right? We have discussed this, right? All of you. I'm not getting any responses from you. Okay, we have discussed this. There is something called peak hour for any application. Peak hour is when there is maximum, the application is experiencing the maximum load. So we are, we are supposed to collect the information for that peak hour. We are supposed to collect the information for the peak hour. 
we're supposed to collect the information for the peak hour. So guys, are you all saturated? Are we done for the day? I'm just asking you. If you want me to stop it, I'll certainly stop it. And we can continue from the next week. I just want to hear from all of you guys. Are you okay? Should we continue or should we stop? Can we continue? I want to hear from all of you guys. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Thank you. Because I want, whatever I'm telling you, I want you to get it. I want you to get it. Okay? So, please respond. Please respond, guys. If you have anything, you know, just whatever you think, you know, whatever you can guess, you just, just put it in the chat window. Okay? Always remember, performance testing is done for the peak hour. Why? Because if the application works fast in the peak hour when there is a maximum load, application certainly works fast in any other hour. Application certainly works fast in any other hour. So that is the reason why whenever we do performance testing, we do it for the peak hour and for this workload related data is what we are doing the performance testing for. We are collecting this information so that we do the performance testing for that. Okay. So we collect this for the peak hour. We collect this for the peak hour. We collect this for the peak hour. Okay. We collect this information for the peak hour and we do the performance testing for the peak hour. We do the performance testing for the peak hour. So whatever the numbers that you collect here, that is what the performance testing you are doing it for. For these numbers, you are doing the performance testing. For these numbers, you are doing the performance testing. Again, the client, you know, how can you get this information? By interviewing the clients. Interviewing means talking to the clients and finding out the people who is responsible for that and then asking, requesting them to give this information. Okay? Requesting them to give this information. Otherwise, you know, sometimes they will give you the web server logs you are supposed to Get into the use the web server logs to get this information all by yourself. Okay. So <clears throat> if they have given you the web server logs, okay. So for, for analyzing these logs, you can use some tools like Splunk. Okay. You, you can use some tools like Splunk to analyze further to get this information by yourself. To get this information by yourself. Okay. So if they give the web server logs, so you can use some tools like Splunk to analyze further so that it will give you the breakdown that for login so and so information for account summary details so and so for transaction history so and so for open 3d so and so how do you get this by using some tools like Splunk it will break it down it will break it down and it will give the information to you it will give the information for you for you okay to you so now how will you get when you go to the Splunk you know watch carefully how you will get this information watch carefully how you will get this information okay watch carefully how you will get this information okay there are some suggestions or some uh, information or some stuff uh, uh, i'm getting uh, uh, I'll, I'll look into that I'll, I'll look into that shortly guys just hold on okay so rupa you said no okay so there is some activity which is going on would you consider the transaction volumes as a throughput rate? No, you can consider this as hits per second fill. Okay. Okay. So let's say these are all transactions per hour. Okay. So this is how you get. Watch carefully, guys. Okay. Okay. So this is for 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. Okay. So this is what it is. Okay. Then what you have to collect? Okay. Now you have 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. Okay. Then you will have certain information. Okay. Let me decrease this by 70% just for my discussion purposes. Okay. Okay, I'm applying some formulas wise, don't worry about the formulas. Okay, so this is something. Okay, let's say this is 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. Okay, if you are good with Excel, right? Uh, I mean, usually you become a manual tester or a performance tester. At some point of time, you will become really good with Excel. So all I'm doing is decreasing it by 10% just for my discussion purposes. Okay. So give you an idea as to what it is. You cannot have partial. Okay. So like this, you have 10 a.m. to 11, 11 to 12 and all that. 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. 
and 11 a.m. to 12 a.m. 12 a.m. to 1 1 to 2, 2 to, for all the 24 hours you get the information for all these all of these okay but now I'm limiting it to only four okay I'm limiting it to only three hours honestly speaking but you will have this 10 a.m. to 11 11 to 12 12 to 1 sorry okay 12 to 1 1 to 2 and all that you will have like this you will continue to have for the whole 24 hours now you have to see you have to see which hour is having the maximum transactions which hour is having the maximum transaction out of this out of these three if you watch carefully okay if you watch carefully let's add all of these transactions let's add all of these transactions let's add all of these transactions guys okay so you can add all of that so whatever I'm doing on the Excel, you can ignore. If you add all of that, it is 2,540. Okay, you are adding all of that. You are adding all of that. Okay, and let's see how much it is. It is 2,286. You are adding all of that, all the transactions. You are adding all the transactions. Okay. Okay. So out of this, which one, ha which hour is having the maximum transactions, guys? Which hour is having the maximum transactions? Can you please tell me which hour is having the maximum transactions? Out of this, all of this, which hour is having the maximum transactions? The first one. Which is the peak hour then? Which is the peak hour? The first one. Which is the peak hour? Are we speculating or are we getting it from the logs? We are not speculating. We are getting it from the logs. Okay? This we are getting it from the logs. 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. seems to be the peak hour. So we do the performance testing for this. We do the performance testing for this. Because if the performance is good for this hour, definitely it will be good for this hour. It will be good for this hour because every other hour, it is less. The load is less. For every other hour, the load is less as compared to the peak hour. So if the performance is good for this hour, the performance will be certainly good for this hour. Performance will be certainly good for this hour. Or in other words, performance will be good for the next 24 hours or all the 24 hours if the performance is good for the peak hour. So we do the performance testing for the peak hour. So that's what we consider. That's what we consider it for our workload modeling. Okay. Okay. That's what we get it for the workload modeling. Okay. Next question is where do we get these numbers from? Okay. So if the application is already in production, application is already in production. Okay. So people are using it. Every hour people are using it. So in the web server, in web server log, all this information is stored. In the web server log, all this information is stored. Okay, let me put this in the note wing note. Okay, so so application is already in production, which means that the real people are already using this banking application. What is this banking that we have considered? Bank of America. Okay, Bank of America application. This is in production. Even now it is in production. You use it, I use it, everybody is using it. So whenever you use something, right, all that information is stored in the web server log. So once you pull out this log, this, this can be given to you. You don't have access to the web servers. So somebody uh, uh, who is responsible person will pull out the log and will, will, will be able, able to mail this log to you. It will be typically a .txt file. Okay. Then you import this file into a software called Splunk. Okay. So you import this file into a software called Splunk. Okay. And then, okay. And then you will be able to you will be able to get this information or you can you can uh, you can configure the Splunk. Okay, if if there okay in other words, let's let's forget that nobody is using that. So you can configure that Splunk. You can configure that Splunk to 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 look at the web server logs and then automatically the logs will be pulled into the Splunk. You will be able to get all this information or see all this information in the Splunk itself. So then you have to manually watch the logs carefully, put it together and then put it in an Excel sheet. You can do that. Okay. So then you see how much, how many logs are happening from eight to nine, you know, using your, using your skills of Excel, you should be able to get it. Okay. But usually a business analyst will be giving this information to you. Usually the business analyst will be giving this information to you. Okay. So, <clears throat> So this is how it is, but I want you to understand what it is like, you know, how do we collect this? So this is what we can collect. It. So Kumar, if it's a brand new, we have already discussed this. This is, this is little bit of, you know, I, I'll tell you what I have done. Okay. It's a brand new. Okay. So it's a brand new, never it was in production, but first let me come to, before coming to the brand new, let me complete this. Kumar, I'll certainly take that question. Okay. <clears throat> 
so this is how it will be then figure out what is the peak cover get this uh, get these numbers get these numbers over here and whatever we are we are getting this number into that's what we are doing the performance testing for so we are doing the performance testing for what for for the hour 7 to 8 am 7 to 8 am is the peak hour for this we do the performance testing the idea is if the, if the application works fine the application works fine in this hour it will work for any other hour so we get these numbers over here and we do the performance testing again performance testing is done for one hour and we make sure when we run the performance testing for that one hour 700 logins are happening 1000 account summaries are happening 800 transaction histories are happening 30 open fds are happening 10 statements five years are happening so we are we are creating the same load in our performance testing as well now we'll calculate the response times for login account summary check transaction history open fd and statements while this load is being created while this load is being created we look for the response times okay not any other load this load why because in the real world that load is happening okay in the real world that load is happening okay so for us for us what my lead has asked me to do is or when i was there okay so what my client i wouldn't say lead, my client has asked that or oh, right now it is 10 percent so kumar why don't you add 10 percent more and do the performance testing to be on the safe side okay because when the application goes live probably it might increase by 10 percent so add 10 percent more to these numbers these are for now but I, uh, when when we are done with the performance testing, when application goes live, it will be one more month. So probably it might increase by 10 more percent. To be on the safe side, increase these numbers by 10 more percent and do the performance testing. Certain people ask for that. Certain people don't ask for that. But for me, that was asked for. Uh, that's what, that was what asked for me. So I went ahead and added 10 percent more to these numbers, and then I've done the performance testing. For Okay, but that's just offhand information, not that important. It doesn't happen in all the projects, but that's what is happened in mine. Okay, <clears throat> so this is how we collect the workload. What is the significance of collecting this? Because when you've done the test for one hour, load test, which test you will do? Which test you will do? The load test. When you do the load test, you do the test for how many hours? One hour. And when you do the load test, when you do the load test for one hour, what is the expectation? What is the expectation of one hour? After one hour, 700 logins should happen in your performance testing. 1000 account summaries should happen in your performance testing. 800 checking transactions should happen in our performance testing. If, okay, you have done, you have done the load test. You have done the load test, guys. Okay, now let me tell you, okay. So let me ask you a question. Okay, this is the this is the hour for which you are doing the performance testing, right? This is the hour we are doing the performance testing, right? So I have a question. I have a question now. I have a question. Watch carefully. You have done the testing, okay? Or let me copy this. It's all getting messed up, okay? So let me copy this part at the bottom, okay? So <clears throat> watch carefully, guys. I'm asking a simple question, okay? Now, this is what you have selected as a, as a workload related data. Okay, 7 to 8 being the peak hour. Now, you have done the load test or you have executed the load test. Load test should be done for what? One hour because you have collected the information for one hour. So, load test needs to be done for one hour as well. So, you have done the load test. After the load test, you have realized that logins are 710. Okay. Uh, <coughs> account summary details, 800 transactions you have accomplished. Checking transaction history. 2000 you have accomplished open fd only two transactions you have accomplished statement history you have accomplished 80 okay so have you performed your load test right have you performed your load test right have you performed your load test right no no guys so now even with this load test even with this load test you will have response times for login and all that for each one of them you will have the response times but you haven't created appropriate load at all you haven't created appropriate load at all then what is the significance of those response times you have to create the load what is happening in the actual production you create the similar load then the response times matters then the response times matters okay then the response times matters phil let's not come to the pacing here okay when we do the workload modeling we'll get to the pacing okay so it is very very important that after you to run the load test for one hour whatever the numbers that you have accomplished you match it to the numbers which are there in the workload modeling if the numbers are right then you have created the correct load then the response times are of are of significance or of significance probably if you add all of that it becomes 2500 and probably if you add all of those transactions it becomes probably 2500 
I don't know. But let's say even if that happens, but this 2500 is different from this 2500 transactions, even then you are not doing the performance testing correctly. So both the things should match. Both the loads should match. Only then you can say that your performance testing for the or your load test is an appropriate load test. Otherwise, you haven't done the proper load test. Okay, so to avoid this, to avoid this when you do the load test, when you do this load test, okay, for one hour and to accurately get these numbers, accurately get these numbers when you do this, okay, let's say after the load test, this is what you have accomplished, okay, then you have done the load test correctly. To accurately get these numbers, you do an activity called, to you do an activity called workload modeling. If this activity called workload modeling is done appropriately, if this activity called workload modeling, I missed out the name, I missed out the term load modeling. If you have done this workload modeling accurately, then what is what is the load test that you have created? Uh, the numbers that you see will be uh, will be matching the actual numbers accurately, or match the numbers um, uh, match the numbers. Okay, so if you have done the workload modeling correctly or in other words, there is a term called pacing. Okay, as a part of workload modeling, you get something called pacing. Okay, when you do this activity, when you do this activity called workload modeling, what is the output? You get something called pacing. In other words, if, if you have done the workload modeling correctly or in other words, if you have calculated the pacing correctly, then what is what what the load that is that you are creating in the load test will be exactly accurate to the load that is actually there in the real world. The load that is actually there in the real world. How can you accomplish this? When you do the workload modeling accurately or when you have calculated the pacing accurately, then what is what is there over here is what you accomplish over here. Okay, you will not get some random numbers like this. Okay, are we clear guys? Are we clear as to why we are collecting this information now? Are we clear why we are collecting this information now? Everybody, I want to hear from everybody. And that is the reason why I'm telling you workload modeling is a very, very important activity because if you haven't done the workload modeling correctly, then you will accomplish some numbers like this, which is totally inappropriate load that you create. Then you think that however I'm running the load test for one hour, I get this response times, I'll produce it. But, but are we putting the right load is very, very important. How we can put the right load by doing this activity called workload modeling accurately. Okay, so far it is clear guys everybody so far it is clear. I'll send you I'll send you this sheet as well. I'll send you this sheet as well. Okay, I'll add this to the work uh, to my this thing and this one. Okay I'll add this to my PPTs as well and I will send, send you this sheet as well. Okay Chandri we are coming to that. I have two days. I have two days completely blocked for workload modeling as I've told you Basic workload modeling as a part of the class and advanced workload modeling I will be doing over the weekends. Okay, don't jump the gun. Everything that you want to that you want and you want to become as a good performance tester, everything is covered in the class. But again, I wanted to set the expectations, guys. Okay, what I can teach you is only 10% to 20%. Okay, what I can teach you is only 10% to 20%, and the remaining 80% is what you can learn. Okay, by practicing. By practicing on different applications okay by spending that long hours okay if you want to become expert in anything okay any art typically thousand hours is minimum okay I went to this uh, skydiving once in Virginia Richmond Virginia okay they said okay they gave in I just did that did that one thing okay and they gave me a certificate and then I was I was asking him you know when can I become this professional skydiving they said close to 2000 hours of flying time this is when you can become an expert and then this is when you can assist other people okay so any art that you do okay it usually takes thousand hours okay so what we are spending in the class is barely 50 hours okay not only performance testing i'm telling you guys any subject okay whether it is an it or arts or anything okay it or arts when i said arts it could be dance it could be acting it could be direction it could be anything okay so typically you have to spend thousand hours then you can master that particular field okay so uh, i'm giving my 50 hours from my side now how you want it to improve okay so do i have to spend that thousand hours before i get into the project no okay you spend that 200 hours or 300 hours then you can get into the project right away Okay, so 
be active on the Facebook groups, be active on the LinkedIn groups, be active on the WhatsApp groups, you know, do practice on lots of applications. Okay, so post those questions on different forums just to get the answers. Okay, uh, when you struggle, this is when you'll understand a lot of stuff. Okay, a lot of stuff. So I'll do my I'll do my work sincerely from my side. Now it's up to you how you want it to. But what all is required from my basics? What all is required? Okay, it's all provided in the class. The hundred percent clarity you get, and then you can improve upon, and then you practice, practice, and you can improve upon to become an expert performance tester. Okay, I'm just telling you this is the thing in general. You go to Selenium classes, you go to Java classes, you go to SQL classes, you go to everywhere, anywhere. This is what happens. Okay, there's so much to learn. Okay, but do you have to spend thousand hours before get to the project? Don't know. After 50 hours, I think you are good enough. 50 hours from my training and probably 100 hours of you practicing. Okay, 100 or 200 hours. I would say 200 hours on the projects that I give and the assignments that I give and all that and a little bit of more assignments that you give to yourself. 200 hours of practice, then you are good to get into the projects. Good to get into the projects. Okay. Now, 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 that's a workload related data. Okay, so <clears throat> now I've given you one uh, document. So let me see. Okay. Oh, now the next chapter is not next chapter as a part of workload related data. There are a uh, little more information that we have to collect. Okay, so I need 10 more minutes guys. Is it okay so that we can complete this chapter and go to the weekend peacefully and then when we when we come back, we'll come back with a new chapter. Okay. Now, are we done with it? No, 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 no. We are not done with it. Okay. Keep performing. This is SLS. We are we, now we are collecting something called SLS. Okay. What is that? What is that? Data related to response times and other metrics. Let me watch that. What is that? Okay. So you see, this is the this is the NFR that I got it from one of my recent project. I pulled it out and I put it over there. So this is this is an application which will retrieve the data. Okay, this is an application. It's not like your banking application and all that. This is an application wherein it will retrieve the data and put it in the Excel sheet. Okay, so you see navigation between any screens, any damn screens, you don't care. You're going from launch to login or login to home page, home page to log off, log off to something else. So any navigations, they said it is one second. Navigation to one page to another page, they said the maximum response time should be not more than one second. Any saving of the data. The application is such that you do certain stuff and you click on save and all that information will be saved. So any saving of data on any screens, okay, is one second. And the application is such that you can retrieve some data as well. If you are retrieving 50 rows, it is one second. If you are retrieving 500 rows, it is two seconds. Retrieving 2000 rows to an Excel sheet, three seconds. Retrieving 1000 rows to an Excel sheet, it is four seconds. This is this is the NFR that I've written, that I have collected or that I was given uh, for one of the project. So this is how it will be for all the projects. No, I'll show you one other stuff. Okay, so this is the project which is which I've done, you know, probably two years back. Okay, they have categorized all the transactions as simple, medium and complex. Okay, like login is a simple transaction in their terms. Launch is a simple transaction. Balance transfer was a simple transaction. Um, this is for my Bofa, Bofa project. Okay, no, not Bofa, banking, uh, online banking application. So they have categorized certain transactions as simple, like login, launch, balance transfers, um, um, uh, checking the bank, uh, not transaction history. There is a lot of transactions, checking the, uh, ordering the checkbooks or, you know, certain transactions, they have all categorized as simple. Okay, for that, the response time should not be more than two seconds. So complexity level, little medium, they have said five seconds, like pulling the transaction history. For them, it was a comp little complexity level, high level was high. So for them, it was five seconds. And really complex transactions, usually the third party transactions, they call it as complex, it was eight seconds. So this is how it was. As soon as this, I received this NFR, then I went to the um, uh, business and I told you, I cannot categorize which are simple, which are medium, which are complex. Please let me know out of this all these functionalities like login, logout, balance transfers. Tell me which are simple, which are complex, which are medium. Then they said, okay, we'll do it. Then after one week, I followed up again. They said, okay, we'll do it. Then I said, okay, fine. So what I have done is I took all those 50 functionalities or the transactions which are performance critical. And I said, out of this 30, sorry, 50, out of this 50, 
these 40 are simple these five these eight are medium and these two are complex please sign off i with my knowledge i randomly put the numbers and I send the document to them now the ball is there in their court then immediately they came back to me in one day they said oh no 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 this is not how it should be so they changed the numbers and they changed the things and they gave the final document to me okay so <clears throat> this is how it is this is what typically we call it as sls what do we call this as guys there, there is a term for this what do we call this as what do we call this as sls anybody knows the full form of sla anybody know full form of sla anybody know full form of sla wonderful service level okay so they will tell you what is the maximum response times for each transaction so if you are wondering that for login they will give you two seconds log off the, res the response times sls two seconds they won't give you like that they will give you some generic things like this generic things like this then you have to extend it to your transactions you have extended it to my transactions for example now for simple is two seconds so i have extended it to my all my transactions so login is simple so login is two seconds log out is two seconds that's how i've extended it that's how i've extended it okay this is the login okay so <clears throat> now there are other metrics as well that we collect service level agreements yeah the other metrics that we collect for example watch carefully when application is subjected to 1000 concurrent user load the cpu utilization of the web app server should never cross 50% never cross 60% so this 60% or cpu utilization is right we call them as kpis key performance indicators okay so again i am telling you what is kpis kpis is what key performance indicators okay here they said the cpu utilization okay should not be greater than should not be greater than 60% so it should be less than or equal to 60% should be less than or equal to 60% so all this information for the key uh, key performance indicators or kpis should be collected as well as a part of performance testing so you collect sls as well as kpis okay is it clear guys sls is it clear or should i break this down to different uh, transactions or do you want me to break it down to different transactions is it clear or i'll do that no, it's not a big deal okay so now for login let's say it is simple for login let's say it is simple okay i'll say this response times rt means response times i'll say trt transaction seconds response times so they said simple simple is two seconds they said simple is two seconds okay so they also said login is a simple transaction so the response times maximum response times for login is two seconds account summary they categorize let's say as simple so for this one as well the, the maximum response times is two seconds checking transaction is still let's say they have categorized that as complex um, not complex medium complexity so for this it is five seconds open fd cd again they said it's a simple transaction let's say then it is two seconds statement from last five years it is a complex transaction let's say then the response times is eight seconds so this is this is how you break it down break break down that nfr across your transactions or business processes are we clear guys are we clear enough are we clear enough are we clear enough everybody okay wonderful wonderful finally 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 the database related data the database related data okay why we are collecting this database related data first i will tell you why we are collecting this database related data first i will tell you then we will go to the database related data okay so when we are discussing the definition of performance testing when we are discussing the definition of performance testing we said we said okay the performance testing environment this is my performance testing environment right this is my performance testing environment should look like production in every single factor okay so the host machine should be same in cpu ram memory hard disk everything okay the software the web app server should be same okay the code which is deployed on that should be same and the database server should be same like oracle 10g oracle 10g and the data should be same as well in the production you have 1 million records in performance testing environment should we have less records or 1 million records only should we have less records or it should be 1 million records only please tell me guys should we have less records or it should be 1 million records only in every which way in every which way 
the performance testing environment should be same as production environment including the data that is there in the database typically the people what they do they copy the data from the production database into your performance testing database then they will do something called they will do something called anybody knows anybody knows once they are copying they do something called data masking they do something called data masking which means that if the real account number is a b c d 1 2 3 4 the, the real account number is 1 2 3 4 they don't copy literally 1 2 3 4 they will copy 4 5 7 6 they will mask the actual data they mask the actual data but appropriately they put it if your name is kumar gupta they will change it to shraddha gupta or praveen gupta or something like that okay so they mask the data they mask the data so that your data is secured this is a banking application they cannot reveal your ssn number they cannot reveal your other number they cannot reveal your account numbers to a performance testing guys performance testing are still some folks they are real people they can steal the data so when they copy the data from the production environment to the database they mask the data mask the data means they will hide the important information. What is the important information? If it is in US, it is SSN numbers. If it is in Australia or in other countries, you can tell me. If it is in India, it's Aadhaar number. Aadhaar number and PAN number. Okay. So other countries, what do you have, guys? Okay. For SSN numbers. Okay. So these are all the critical information like account numbers. Okay. Uh, date of birth information okay and uh, your address okay billing address okay this is all sensitive information this is all sensitive information and more what else what else account numbers date of birth your name obviously your first name okay your last name this is all we call it as sensitive information this is all we call it as sensitive information Okay, so they are not supposed to reveal this sensitive information to any third person. Okay, data sensitive information. Passwords, obviously passwords. Yeah, so passwords will be however encrypted even in the database. Nobody can see that. Okay, if you have seen any real databases, it's all, if you go back, you will see star, 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 star. Okay, anyways. <coughs> so, <coughs> so when you copy this data when you copy this data from the production database to the performance testing database they will mask all this sensitive information when i said masking when i said masking okay when i said masking what do they do if the actual name is kumar gupta okay they change the name to something like uh, andy gupta okay nobody knows if the actual account number is so and so they will change it to so and so the tool will take care of you know whoever, whichever the tool which is migrating the data from here to here the tool will take care of it okay so if the actual date of birth if the actual uh, what do you say account number date of birth dob information is 27th august 2006 okay they change the then the tool of uh, the as per the data masking this will be changed to 28 something like that random maybe july 2001 okay like this all the data will be copied but the critical data will be masked which means that instead of real data it will copy the dummy data instead of real data it will copy the dummy data so what do what is the term we use for that data masking so who will is the performance tester is supposed to copy this data from this database to database uh, to, to, to the production database to performance testing database and also do the data masking? No, you deal with the infrastructure team. You deal with the database guys. You deal with the database guys to do this activity, to do this activity. Okay, so this is what you clearly mention in your test plan. You clearly mention in your test plan that so how will the database guys knows if you keep that in mind it's not gonna thing you have to communicate to us those guys how can you communicate the best way to communicate is through the test plans you create the test plans you say that i have studied as a part of nfr gathering i understood that 1 million records are there in the production environment i need 1 million records in the performance testing environment so that performance testing is accurately done so i request all the database guys the rest it's a responsibility of the database guys to or database admins to copy this information now you send this test plan to the database lead as well for what for review 
sometimes you can ask to sign off as well if there is a work that you are assigning to a certain team you ask for a review or a sign off now that guy has reviewed and signed off which means that he is agreeing to take that take up the task and do it so this is where the things get dirty as a part of test plan walk through there is a there is an activity once the test plan is done there is an activity called test plan walk through we have done this yesterday we have discussed this yesterday once the second stage called test planning is done you have a walk through walk through to whom all the guys walk through to your program manager the database guys the network guys every developer everything because you may have some work for them so i we want all the leads to be there as a part of the performance test plan walk through now during the walk through you will clearly tell them that the database guys are supposed to do this for me only when the performance testing now the database lead will say oh we have already lots of work we don't give us additional work now the program manager will come into picture he will understand the criticality and then he might assign this work to the other team you do understand that database team is a different team than performance testing you cannot assign the work to other teams so this is when you give the work, you will allow you will allow you are ask the program manager you ask the program manager to come into picture and then help you assign this work to the appropriate team okay are there tools are there any tools for this data migration or data transfer okay some people call this as data migration some people call this as data transfer are there any tools for that there are a lot of industry standard tools okay so ibm optim is a popular one okay like this there are a lot of tools for the transfer for transferring the data from one database to the other database okay and the data masking is op is, op is already present in the part as a part of opting okay other, there are other tools but this is the only tool that i am aware of because for my project they have used this so i know this okay but they, i know there are at least 10 to 20 tools out there which are some are open source some are paid okay and data masking is is done as a part the, the tool takes care of the data masking the tool takes care of the data masking okay any doubts guys ibm anything coming from ibm they don't give it for free always remember that okay anything coming from ibm okay they don't give it for free okay so they they make business they are into business they are there to make the business okay as, as i said production database should be similar to performance testing database okay this is what i just told you the production database and 1 million record the performance testing should have the 1 million record as well and you as a part of nfr gathering you will not collect what all 1 million there as long as you get this number it is, should be good enough okay you need not have to say all the 1 million records you're not going to collect and keep it with you all you need to know is what is the number okay then so that both of them are similar both the databases are similar okay so this is what it is guys so this is the information that you collect okay so by the end of the class now today what i will send i will send the following documents okay the recorded videos okay running notes and the excel sheet that i have okay and you already know the assignments guys you already know the assignment please don't expect that i'll send the assignment separately i am putting the assignments in the in the running notes itself please pull out your assignment from the running notes please complete this please complete this okay so these are the documents that you can expect from me today the things which i am expecting from you is the assignments please take the assignments seriously and complete it okay so the one the second one is what i am keen on not that you know you shouldn't do the first one second one and first one both of them is important please do. now i am ready to take your questions but before taking the questions today's offline classes starts from today guys i have sent you the address in the in the whatsapp group there is a separate whatsapp group for classroom trainings okay if somebody wants me to add you to that classroom whatsapp groups please tell me whoever are serious about coming to the classrooms then please send me the request i'll add you to that group otherwise there is no point you know adding to that whatsapp group the class starts at 11 am sharply okay please don't come at 11 15 11 20 11 30 okay please come at 11 a.m sharply please be planning plan to come over there by 10 45 because you will take some time to identify the place because this is the first time you are coming please plan to come by 10 45 by the time i guide you and uh, you know walk you through it will be 
15 minutes. So please plan to come by 10.45 sharply. Okay. And any questions, my phone is available. Please call me immediately if you have difficulty finding. Okay. And if possible, when I get there, I'll share the location as well with you so that you can just come over there. Okay. So now I have a tie up with a company called IT IT eLearn. Okay. IT eLearn. So the board that you see over there is not Isha Training Solutions. The board you see over there is IT eLearn. Okay. I have a tie up with them. So that's the board that you will be looking for. Okay. When you get there. Now I am ready to take the questions guys. I hope you are enjoying the classes and people who are already doing performance testing. There, there, is, there is still some stuff for you to learn from this class I hope. And for somebody who is new, I hope you are enjoying the classes. I hope you are enjoying the classes and see you know how the performance testing is being done. Or how the performance testing could be done in the real world. Okay. Now I am open for questions guys. Uh, I have seen some guys uh, unmuted themselves. They can start speaking. Yes. Yeah, my question was, uh, you were talking about WLM, so WMM, WLM is just creating a correct load, that's it, or other things also involved in it. Yes, yes, yeah. Question, what is the question? <clears throat> WLM is applying the correct load only. WLM is? Applying the correct load, creating the correct load. Yes, the, the objective, the final objective of workload modeling is to create appropriate load, okay? Final objective or final, uh, what do you say? Yeah, objective is to create accurate load. Okay, accurate load. How can you do that? By calculating the pacing. Okay, when you calculate the pacing accurately, you can do it. So in the interviews, if they ask you what is what is the output of what is what is the whole purpose of doing the workload modeling to calculate the pacing and why do why are we calculating the pacing to create the accurate load? That should be your answer in your interview. Okay, don't jump and tell them that to create the accurate load. Then they will ask you how can you create the accurate load by calculating the pacing accurately. So the whole objective of workload modeling is what? The whole objective of workload modeling is what? To calculate the pacing. And if you can calculate the pacing correctly, then you are creating the load uh, accurately. Okay? Shraddha, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank are you here? Yeah. And load distribution. The distribution across different, uh, what do you say, distribution across different business process on transactions. So, Majit, I'll certainly send the running notes. That's what, when I said running notes, it's the class notes. Okay, let me change this to class notes. Okay. When I said running notes, probably, you know, uh, you are getting it, uh, I mean, you are doubting it. So, you are getting a little doubt. Somehow, I use the word running notes. It's a popular term in India. So, yes, I should start using the word class notes. So, everybody, everybody understood when I said running notes, guys? I, I'm just, I'm just asking you. Uh, it's just me, I use the word running notes or it's, it's a very common term. I'm trying to understand that. It's a common term, right? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, it's a common term. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Popularly in India, in India, there people say running notes, running notes, running notes. No, running notes is not common for me, Chaudhary. <laughs> I, I guess so. I guess so. So if you are born and brought up in India, and then you go to the schools and colleges here, right? You know, this is the term which is very popular. So as the class is going on, the notes that you do is the running notes, not when you are actually jogging. <laughs> okay. So, okay, guys, uh, that's about it. I hope uh, you had a wonderful weekend. Uh, so, three days of weekend, do all the assignments. You come back with a lot of energy. And then there is one more thing I'm supposed to tell you, send you. All the prior batch videos. Yes, only then you can use this. Only you can do this assignment. Nobody has reminded me that. Okay, I'll do that. I'll do that so that you can, you can uh, practice it. Okay, guys. So thank you. I'll take off. I uh, see you over the next weekend. Again, I'm telling you have a wonderful weekend.